Back in slave days, ships went to Africa and they pulled these poor people from their homes to put them on ships and bring them overseas to be slaves. In order to keep the slaves in line during the journey from Africa, they had to keep them in shackles. In the 1860s, slaves were not allowed to wear shoes. There are many ways we sacrificed. You know, not only did Harriet Tubman sacrifice her life to bring people out of slavery, Take me back to the plantation. But I was all right for a little while. But then when I got there, one of my friends, I happened to look at the shed door was open. And I heard him a moment. And I saw that overseer out there. He was he went puffing because he tried to run away. Well, I sure know what was going to happen with my friend. So I went in there and I helped my friend escape. Well, that old overseer, he was mad. He picked this thing up off the barn, it was away, and he threw it and hit me in my head and knocked me out. I passed out. And after that, I used to have what they call sleeping spell from getting hit in the head. That's what made them folks think I was crazy. <laughs> but I said, that's all right. Them think I'm crazy. So I know, oh, Harriet, she going to wait for me. I ain't going to be no slave till I die. I'm gone. So I waited one day when the time was right. I gathered up a bunch of chickens and I walked down the road because I know they see old crazy hat with these chickens. They just look like, oh, that's old crazy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was on the way to me. And I started. And I got there. God knows it took me a while, but I got there. I had some help. Cause there was there was some good people, some good Quakers. This one Quaker lady, she hit me in the wagon, and she put a blanket over me. And when when we got to our house, she gave me this piece of paper, and she told me when I get to the next town, to give them this paper, and they would help me out. Well, that town, I believe it, that that was Midtown Delaware, as I was coming from Cambridge, from Dorchester County. So I got to the birds plantation in Middletown, and they helped me. And then from Middletown, I came on, I go across the South Carolina River too. Then I came on up, I came through Smyrna, I came through Delaware City, I came through Newcastle County, and I came on up to Wilmington. And when I got to Wilmington, I met another friend up here. His name, Thomas Gatt. Now Thomas Gatt, he was a blacksmith. He owned this blacksmith shop down on Shipping Street. Right now, that's where the old Dell Tech is. Mm -hmm. That was Thomas Garrett's blacksmith shop. Well, Thomas, because he had that to sleeve, he got caught. And they made me think a big time. He lost everything. He lost all his money. But Thomas said, he don't care. He didn't think nobody should be no sleeve. Mm -hmm. And he was going to help us out. So he helped us. And we got out of the room. And we got up to the I've made 19 trips down south, and I bought out 300 slaves. But the one I loved the best was my ma and my pa. Oh, it's my best. I was determined I was going to get them out of the slaves, and I did. And when I got the candle, I got down on my knees, and I kissed the ground. I'm Harriet Tubman, people. I'm Harriet Tubman, the slave. I'm Harriet Tubman, free woman. 
and I'm free beyond my grave. You know that the Civil War ended legalized slavery in the United States, but did y'all never wonder why it took another hundred years for us to gain our freedom through the Civil Rights Movement? Well, it was slavery by another name. I'm going to tell you the story about Green Cottenham. Now, Green Cottenham, he was born to, to his parents who had survived slavery in Shelby County, Alabama. Now, just because I said it was in Alabama, this, this story happened in Texas, in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Carolina, Virginia, you name it. Now, what happened to Green was he was the youngest son, he was a baby child, Two parents that had been born in slavery and survived slavery, and in 1908, Green Cottenham was arrested. Now, Green was arrested for vagrancy. Now, vagrancy is really not a crime. Vagrancy just means that they, he couldn't prove at the time that the sheriff came up on him that he had a job. But so Green was arrested. He went to court. And he was found guilty of vagrancy, and he was given 30 days sentence. But now, of course, you know, Green had to pay the court fees, the judge fees, uh, the, the hearing fees, and all these other fees, which he couldn't pay because he didn't have a job in the first place. Now, because of all the fees, they extended Green's sentence to nearly a year. Now, the Alabama correctional system, the state of Alabama correctional system, had a standing agreement. And the next day, the very next day, Green Cottenham was sold. Green Cottenham was sold to, a, to the Pratt Mines, which is a subsidiary of U.S. Steel. Isn't there a U.S. Steel plant up here? Explain mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. U.S. Steel, the backbone of the American Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. U.S. Steel. Now, Green Cottenham was sold for $12 a month in order to pay off his fees by the Alabama Correctional System to the Pratt Mines. And the Pratt Mines could pretty much do whatever they wanted with him. So this was slavery by another name. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened to Green? Well, Green was sitting down in those coal mines. The men who went to that coal mine were put in chains. And they were held down in the, ch in the coal mine and expected to work 16 hours a day. They were expected to mine six tons of coal a day. And if you didn't mine it, you were beaten. And then when you were brought up, you only had eight hours. And then you were back down in there. Now, of course, it was hot in there. There was no ventilation. There was coal dust. So the men died. A lot of men died. And Green died, died of the lung fever within the first six months. Now, what happened to Green? Well, we're not sure. But we know that there's hundreds of thousands of, of unmarked graves over by the refuge pile near the Pratt Mine. And we know that a lot of African-American men, all black men, were buried there in unmarked graves. And we do know that some of the men who died were thrown into the blast furnace that turned the coal into cork. So you see, our blood and our sweat has fertilized the soil of America. And our bones were ground down to pave the roads in America. And our life force built all the steel mills and the skyscrapers that you see in America. So never forget the power and the strength that have built our country, because this is our country that we have put our life, blood, and force of our men and women in. Never, ever forget the, the sacrifice of our people, and we can walk the streets of America with great pride. Because this is our day. There are many ways we sacrificed. You know, not only did Harriet Tubman sacrifice her life to bring people out of slavery, not only were the crooks used as symbols to get us out of, out of slavery, there were some other really unique things. If you would take a look here when you go by, there's this box 
It looks just like a cardboard box. Well, there was a man named Henry. His name was Henry Brown. He ended up being called Henry Fox called Brown. And you know why? He was smart enough. Remember, Matt's always thought he was stupid. But he was smart enough to have a friend build him a box that was big enough for him to get himself into and have himself mail to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> it took like 20 some days and you can't imagine what it was like. But this man was a slave. He's supposed to be stupid. But he was smart. <laughs> he mailed himself to Philadelphia and he made it to slavery. Mm. The size box, box car brown, and some Mondays, we have some other people. The Shirley Chisholms, the Barbara Jordans, the Marcus Garveys, the Martin Luther Kings, the Rosa Parks, the Malcolm X's, and I certainly cannot forget this one person because if it were not for him, we wouldn't have religious freedom. We wouldn't be in this civil today. Turn it around and turn and you know what? This is a journey. And you know what? We ain't entertaining, folks. You are part of this journey. Amen. So we're going to sing that song again. And I want to hear every voice in this hallway. <laughs> I want to let nobody Worshiping together, they boom, just like that, all of a sudden. 
They said, oh no, you folk of color gotta go up in the balcony. They wouldn't even let us take, take communion. Peter Spencer said, uh-uh, I ain't having none of this. And he said, I'm gonna start my stuff by you, church. And so he took a group of people, he walked on down the street and established what they called Easy on Church. You know, they called it the rock. Still there now, but it's called Easy on Mount Carmel. So you see, <laughs> hey, they stayed there for about seven, eight years or so. And then suddenly, when they thought they was free, they wasn't letting them make any kind of decisions. Oh, well, you can be in that building, but we still gonna tell you what to do. Mm. After a while, Peter said, I did not march down the street and start another church for this. And so, he left easy on He walked across the street to, they say, a little chicken coop, and he established the church, the Union Church of African members. But this time, this time, he said, ain't nobody going to come and tell me what to do. Mm. And so in 1813. 1813. 1813. You see, that was before the Civil War. They were still bringing Africans. Put them on the auction block. Mm. It was a time when black people couldn't read or write. It was against the law. Peter Spencer said, this is going to be my for my people, and we're going to worship God the way the spirited people worship. So he took his case to court. He represented himself. Guess what, y'all? He won. In 1813, before Frederick Douglass was born, before Harriet Tubman was born. You see, he was a man before his time. That was a dangerous thing for a black man to do. But he did it. And today we are here still celebrating. That's history. That's American history. Delaware history. That's true history. Happened right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, Sister Pat, Mama Pat. Not only now did Peter Spencer start to, to, to give us our own religious freedom, mm -hmm. Peter Spencer is also responsible for what we call today the Big Quarterly. It's the August Quarterly. And it was started back in 1812. Yes, sir. Anyway, you wanted to worship that day. 
community. And then he had the opportunity to connect with the Underground Railroad. Let's not destroy all that Peter Spencer and all these other folks sacrificed to us today. Young people, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all you young people. Don't throw it away. There were too many people who sacrificed their lives, mm -hmm. who gave their blood mm -hmm. so that you could be where you are today, mm -hmm. so that you could have an education, mm -hmm. so that you could go to any school you want That's to go right. to, right. so that yeah. you could sit in any restaurant and eat wherever you want, That's so right. that you could go to any fountain and drink wherever you want to That's drink right. from, so that you could ride a train up in the front. You didn't have to sit in the back. That's right. You need to find out if you don't know who you are, where you come from, so you know where you're going. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Crazy thy faithful Morning by my morning, new mercies I, I see. Oh, I have me here. Thy hand has provided. Lord, I'm sweet. Summer and winter, springtime and the harvest, sun, moon, and stars, and their courses of Join with all nature and manifold. Oh, <laughs> 